One of the things that people struggle the most with is their niche. How do you define what it is that you're doing for whom? How do you describe in a way that people understand? One of the biggest problems that everyone, you know, solopreneurs particularly have in marketing. So my colleague and friend, Tad Hargrave, and I really can call him a friend. You know, a lot of times you hear marketers says, my friend, George, and you know, I just met George last week, you know. No, Tad is, I've known him for, uh, I think, 10 years. So really is a friend. It's not just a marketing ploy. Um, he has, a Tad has been coaching people on their niche for um, a long time. And he has helped hundreds of people with it. He's very, very good at doing it. So I'm grateful that I could bring him here to coach some of my own clients on their niche statement. Um, excited to have him here. We have a lot to talk about, so I'm just going to bring him on and we'll get going with, um, with our first one. So we're going to go with Denise and then Bev and then uh, Darcy, and then we'll kind of go from there. So Tad, oh, and I also want to make sure before I say anything, um, we are doing this in celebration of Tad's uh, launch of his online course about niching and figuring out your niche. He has... Um, a really in-depth program. It's a 90-day program where every day you get a little video. So it's, it's very doable and it's very comprehensive. Every day you get a little video. It's called uh, the Niching Spiral Home Study Course. And you can find it at nichingspiral.com. Yeah, nichingspiral.com. And then go to, uh, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. So uh, I wanna make sure you all know how to get there. nichingspiral.com. And then go over to niching products and click on the home study course. Um, I just want to let you all know that uh, if you buy the course and you let me know that you bought it through me, Tad is giving me uh, a commission, which then I will pass the value on to you. So the course itself, I just FYI, I always like to get to the bottom line. So the course itself, it's very comprehensive as you can see here. It's 300 bucks US. I get 150. So I'm going to pass that on to you all, not the cash, sorry, I get to keep that, but I get to, I pass it on to you, the course value. So if you buy $300 course from Tad, I will give you $150 of my courses that you haven't bought yet. So it's kind of like paying $300 to get $450 worth of courses. Now, I, I promise you $300 is really worthwhile to work with Tad because you get into his Facebook group, you get a personal kind of niche coaching from him and all the other stuff you see on this page but I want to show you what Tad does so you can see how valuable it is to work with him. So Tad, thanks for being here and thanks for doing this. And I'm gonna make sure I unmute you. So Hello, you. All thank right, you so cool. much for having me. So yeah. out, outside you can see the wind, so I hope the, the, it's not too uh, crazy. So uh, no, your audio is good, okay. there's no wind, there's no wind sound, okay, I, your good. jacket is helping to cover that up and great Perfect. tree in the background, it's cool, I like it. Um, so anything you want to say before we start the first one? You know, just that I'm, yeah, I'm glad to be here. This is, of course, the, the almighty first step. Uh, you know, whether you're trying to build your business in a fast way or a slow way, this is the first thing. This is always the first thing. Any marketing course you go to, niching is always the first step. To the extent that you get this clear, you're going to be able to find your clients more easily. You're going to be able to create offers for them. You're going to be able to write copy for them. Uh, they're going to be, this is really important. They're going to be able to tell their friends about what you do. You know, word of mouth is much easier. Why? Because there's actually something to talk about. Oh yeah, I, I see this person. They help these kind of people with these kinds of problems. You see what everything gets, literally everything in marketing gets easier with this. And without it, everything in marketing is, is frankly impossible. So it's, I'm just, it's a, I guess, kudos to you for being here. I mean, whether it's George and I or somebody else working on niching, just kudos to you for working on niching. I don't know why I need to give you kudos, but uh, good job because of course this, this, I'm just admiring it because it does make things easier. I think it's a smart move regardless of where you get the help. Yeah, awesome. Excellent, excellent, man. Thank you. Well, um, I've got uh, five clients here um, okay. who, could use your help on this. So I have a document that has their statement. So um, would it make sense for me to share my screen then and then we could talk yeah. to it? Like, like last time. Cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to share my screen now and uh, go to the document. And let's start with Denise. 
And then we'll go to okay. Bev and then we'll go to Darcy. So here we go. Um, I'm going to, and say, I'll just say hi to Denise as well. Hi, Denise, thanks for being here. Hi, I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah, so um, shall I go ahead, Tad? I'll just, I'll just read and take notes. And yes, and then... but also if you could, um... There's, I've got this weird like waiting scrolling thing in the middle of my screen. So if you could move that a little bit lower on your screen, because for some reason I um, like this. Let me, yeah, let me actually maybe I, I can flip my phone here. Just want to make sure I can see it so I can give you all the best feedback possible. Yeah. Um, the uh, no, like lower. If you can knock it down like five return buttons, like this, a little bit lower. A little bit lower. Almost at the bottom of the screen, basically. Uh, one more. One more. Oh, oh, perfect. That's great. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Um, so you said, I work with women who are already fine with being psychic, uh, but it's hit and miss, and they just can't get their psychic guidance in a regular way they can actually use. I help them turn up the dial on their intuitive gifts and get the guidance they want without any new age crap. Okay. Interesting. So here's what I would say is, so women who already um, were already fine being psychic, that's good. I mean, this, so this gives me a sense of what we would call the, uh, well, it's just a bit about who they are, you know, and the moment they are in their life. Because certainly there'd be moments or women who, uh, you know, uh, have psychic gifts and are freaked out by it. That's a possibility. There could be women who uh, don't know they have it. So this is, you've, you've named something that I think, you know, when we say, oh yeah, I, I totally am psychic and I know it, right, okay, but it's hit and miss. Um, so that's good too. I can see them identifying with that, saying, yeah, that's me. And they just can't get their psychic guidance in a regular way they can actually use. Um, so this is, okay, in a regular way they can actually use. So there's, there's two things there. One is the frequency of it. And the second is the practicality of it. Um, those are two things I'm hearing. And maybe <clears throat> those are both, you know, important to them that it's, it's kind of accurate and practical. It's useful, but it's also um, more frequent. Um, so I don't know if I'm suggesting any clarifying. I'm just noticing those are two kind of island bees. I'm curious which is more important for them. Like if they had to pick one, I guess it would be the accuracy. But yeah, and, help, uh, and Tad, yeah. you just mentioned island bee. I just want oh, to okay. say for the people who don't know what that is, um, this is something that you've talked, you talk a lot about in your content. And yeah. uh, there was another coaching session you did with some of my other clients that that you described it, but basically, do you want to give a quick basic? Sure. So yeah, your ideal clients are on island A, where they're struggling with some kind of a problem. Yeah, they want to be on island B, where there's some result that they're craving. And your business is like a boat that can take them from one island to the other. And when we're talking about uh, target markets as we are today, the most important part of the target market is this, is that journey from island A to B. What's the issue they're struggling with? What's the problem they have? What's the symptoms they're experiencing? What's the result that they are craving? Um, that's the heart of it. That's 90% of your target market. If you get that, the other stuff is sort of, um, you know, additional. But if you don't get that, uh, you know, you've got the icing, but you've got no cake. Um, yeah. And so, so I just hear that there's two island Bs here. There's two results. There's a frequency and the accuracy. Um, and it's okay to have both. Uh, just noticing it. So I help them turn up the dial on their intuitive gifts. Okay, yeah. So that's a way of combining them both, I guess. That would be island B there uh, to get the guidance they want without any new age crap. I, mean, I think this is good. I think it makes sense. It's, um, yeah, I don't know if I've got any huge feedback on it. It's, well, I'm not surprised because Denise has yeah. really dialed in her business. I mean, she, she's, she's doing quite well. Um, yeah. And, you know, she's got a, she's got quite a following. People love her work. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Well, and I've been stalking you, Ted, for quite some time. Okay. That's right. Well, yeah. And the thing that's also good about this is the, um, without the new age crap, 
there's a point of view there. You know, this is going to turn off people who are into the new age stuff. It'll be really attractive to people who are were uh, repulsed by it like you are and this is always a a useful thing when you're articulating what you do whether it's a target market or whether it's your home page or whatever or a sales page is once you're done kind of look over it and think is there anything i could add to this to make it more repulsive to the people i don't want <laughs> um and it's you usually can and it's usually helpful to do that so um and the, the also you used what i would call the without frame which i think is good just useful for everyone listening to this too consider is is there something that they are scared they will have to do uh, or have or or um, you know in order to get the result so for example uh, you know I help people beat depression without medications would be the a classic example I help you lose weight without going on crazy diets I help you build muscle without going to the gym three hours a day every day that type of thing. So there's often things people say, oh, I'd like to build my psychic thing, but oh God, am I going to have to, you know, you know, sit on a crystal every day? And, you know, um, there, there are those things that people are concerned about. And if you know that that's, there's a big roadblock for your clients, it's really important to name that right in the target market, right in the headline. Because what we're doing here in articulating this is functionally, we're creating the, uh, this is the starter kit for a really killer headline. Yeah, this is where we begin, is getting all this stuff clear. Once this stuff is clear, boom, headlines, you know, uh, coming soon. And a headline that they would read, because what we want is your ideal client to be able to read this or a headline, or, you know, if you talk to them at a party and they say, what do you do? And you basically say this. What we want is for them to say, oh, my God, that's me, not so what, or not that's nice. You know, that's me, not that's nice. Because if you're at a party, someone says, what do you do? And you say, oh, I do this. And they say, oh, that's nice. And everyone at the party says, that's nice. And, and no one you ever meet ever says, that's me. Well, then so what? You know? So really good work. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Excellent. So, well, let's keep going. Uh, let's I just want to say, you know, give, give Denise a shout out for those mm -hmm. who want to check out her services. Denise Litchfield. There she is. Dot com. All I've right. got a quick question though, Tad. Oh yeah. Go so, ahead. so with this great, now that you know this niche, two hundred and eighty character niche is is done, is that something that you would put on your homepage? Yeah. Um, this is really important. Yeah. Um, here's here's my um, my feedback on just what I'm seeing on the the homepage so far. Is it's all about you. Mm. And the homepage is not about you. It's about them. Mm. Yeah, the homepage has got to be, um, they see themselves in it, not they see us. They don't care about seeing us. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the, yes, yeah, so some words right above the fold that basically say what you're saying here so that they can see it and say, oh my God. Now, if you can do that in an image, that's uh, great. And if you, know, if you sold products, then you, that's all it may take is, you know, I sell pottery, here's some photos, and there you go. But when it's a service, I think... Um, it does behoove us to use some, some words that our ideal client would read and say, oh, wow, yeah, this is completely me. Yeah, and um, I'll just, can I just say that it's not that yeah. website can't have a lot of information about Denise. It can. It's just no. what you're saying is especially the first touch. Yes. The first Thank touch you. before they scroll down, like there should be something about them. Yes. It's, it's um, unless, I mean, unless you're already famous and everyone who's coming already knows you, you know, like Oprah Winfrey right. could probably get, get away with it. There's probably situations where um, yeah. the opposite would be true. But yes, the very first thing, you know, it's relevance, credibility, and value in marketing. And the very first thing for a first timer has to be relevance. Relevance, yeah. They have to see it and say, oh, this is, this is totally for me. And that can be done in very few words. I mean, uh, one of my uh, folks in my mentorship program is a website, wordpressforgood.com, helps people with uh, their WordPress website troubles. And he, um, the headline we finally got to is, is so simple. It was just, is WordPress critical for your business? Right. Boom. So it's, yeah. you know, six words. It doesn't have to be this, you know, one of these yeah. run-on sentence headlines. Totally. Um, and the other, uh, the other thing is that it, it really depends on whether she's sending people here or she's sending people to a landing page because maybe, maybe most of the time she just sends people to landing pages of products and 
you know, sales pages. Yes. Yeah. And it's, I mean, and sometimes pe people are building a more personality based business where they're really just coming because of you and who you right, are. Right. Right. And, and then maybe you lean more on the, here's who I am. That's right. Um, yeah. But I would say if it's a, you're trying to sell services, I would lean the other way. I, I think actually Denise is uh, either on the cusp or already there in terms of people are coming for her because she has yeah. a very, um, uh, very like memorable, you know, presence. Yeah. And, well, and it may be then one of those things, it can be worth testing. Yeah. You know, right, there are ways right, right, of doing right. what, what's called an AB split where half oh, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I literally did that. And I'll just show you real quick. Okay. I literally split tested the, the first ah. few words on my, this, mm. this, th these two lines. I, I split test several, several different things. And this is what got more people. <laughs> This is what got more people to click through and, and, and go, yeah. go, go other places. So, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would yeah. recommend to everyone, you know, split test. The most simple um, uh, software that's free <laughs> is Google Optimize, um, which is, uh, you know, HTTPS colon slash optimize.google.com. But, yes, if, if you could work with Tad on the niche stuff, <laughs> you can come up with a couple headlines to then split test using this. And, you know, and, and again, try it with a headline with no headline because it that's could right. be that's that for that's your true. people, yeah. they say, <laughs> oh, wow, it was better with the, you know, no words at all. Just the photo was that's perfect. Right. So, yeah, it could, but be, it's, could be. Yeah, good to go with the results. Yeah, cool. All right, let's keep going. Um, all right, so let's give me one moment here. All right, so next up, we've got uh, Darcy's statement. And Darcy's unmuted here. So welcome. Thanks for joining us. And let's go over to Darcy here. Uh, let's see here. Let me just go ahead and get, there and get this down. Um, all right, let's see. Tad, are you able to see this? Um, one sec. Or I could read it as well. Sure. Yeah, if you want to read it out, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll read it. So um, the statement is, I help women who are miserable and stuck find the root cause of what is holding them back, be it physical, emotional, or spiritual, clear it, and get on with their amazing lives using energy kinesiology. And I can read that again. Okay, okay I can read it, so uh, thank you. Um, okay, so I help women who are miserable and stuck to find the root cause of what is holding them back. Um, so it's interesting. What I would say is what you've done is articulated a really good, what I would call a big circle. And the big circle is the sort of general sense of who you want to work with. Uh, I think this, this is a really great, you know, this could work. Uh, this could work well enough <coughs> on a homepage. This is a, a general sense. Uh, I'd be curious in terms of they're miserable and stuck. Uh, well, in what, what are the top three ways? You know, because I guarantee everyone listening to this, when they hear the words miserable and stuck, I were to say, hey, jot down the top three situations you imagine that refers to. Uh, we might, and there are five of us, we might have a lift, list of 15 different things. So it's helpful to give the top three. Of, it's not exclusive, but sort of here's the ones I'm most excited to work with. Here's the ones that are, you know, I'm, I've got the, the most skill in. You know, so um, I help. Somebody says, what do you do? You say, well, you know, there are a lot of women who are kind of miserable and stuck in their life. For example, uh, they're working a job they hate or they're stuck in a loveless marriage. And, and actually, know, uh, since, since Darcy's here, I wonder, Darcy, do you want to say anything okay. about that? Like any? Well, I, yeah, I was thinking relationships. Um, and yeah, people are coming with like sibling relationships kind sure. of things. So si sibling, like family conflicts? Yeah. I mean, so I People. Would you would you say that most of the stuck and miserable is connected to relationships then? Well, what else? Yeah, what, what else is coming yeah. to you? Um, and and uh, physical problems, you know, like uh, shoulder problems, things like that. Um, work. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the here's here's the challenge with where this is headed. Is it suddenly all humans on the planet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, here's what I would invite you to do: is uh, are you at your computer? Oh, of course you are. You're on this call. Uh, could you go to this website, yarrowhealingarts.com? 
Okay. Or actually, George can pull it up. Yeah, thank you, George. It's even better. Uh, Yarrow, Y A R R. Oh, Yarrow. Yeah. Yarrowhealingarts.com. Um, okay. And I want you to read the. Oh, <laughs> that's their cancel. Just to go to their homepage. There we go. So, um, can you can you uh, can you read that out? Not the not the booking protocol. You can get rid of that. Yeah. There we go. So, can you read this out loud? Have you had a persistent pain or mysterious body symptom for a while, and are beginning to wonder if it has emotional roots? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep going. But have no idea how to find out what they might be and how to release, resolve them. Yeah. Okay. So this is a woman, Rachel, who was in my mentorship program, and um, so you see, there, there's a couple things that we did because she came with a very similar thing to what you you have now, and this is two things we did to hone it. One is she really focused on the physical symptoms. Uh, okay. She decided that's what most people were coming was, was some weird ache or pain or body symptom. The doctor says you're fine. We can't find anything wrong. Even naturopaths say they're fine. Um, and the second thing is um, this, this, uh, there's this question I really love of just what are they secretly suspecting might be at the root of whatever that symptom is. So in this case, it's physical symptoms. What do they suspect might be at the root? Some sort of emotional block. So that's one way to do it. There's probably a lot of ways we could have gone with that. Uh, but does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So let's go back to yours. Thank you, George. You're the best for doing all this uh, tech work. Thank you. Uh, OK, so help women who are miserable and stuck to find out the root cause of what is holding them back. So here's my question for you, uh, if you'd be willing to share, what is it that got you into this work? Because I imagine it was very powerful for you that you wanted to share it with other people. And, and what was it that got you into it? Um, I was a dental hygienist and mm -hmm. I had pain in my neck from always looking down in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it went away. I mean, it was a purely physical thing. Yeah. And what's your sense about um, when people come, let's say, with a relationship thing, I don't understand how that relates to the kinesiology. Yeah, me neither, but it does. <laughs> um, it's, it's about detachment and how they can't detach themselves from other people's emotions. And so oh. they can't go on their life path. Right, they can't. Can you? Oh. Is it the, I dropped a shawl somewhere. I don't know if you can. I've lost you here. No, uh, we, you're still here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yep. okay. Um, sorry about this. I just realized I dropped this shawl like I got in Edinburgh on my way walking over. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, yeah, so how does it connect? How does the kinesiology connect? Like, Could you give an example, just a quick example of somebody who came? Had some kind of relationship trouble and then you were able to um, help them and how that what happened sure so um they come in and they you know talk about how unfair their sisters are to them and their sisters are all out to get them and and you, we kind of get into that gap of between where they are and where they want to be and um and they get emotional and and usually there's some tears. And then, you know, with, through muscle testing, we find the emotion, the, the core emotion involved and discuss how that relates. And then we can go through a simple touch for health um, balance or a uh, more complicated professional kinesiology, which, you know, can involve chakras. It, it, but mostly it's, it's uh, you know, it's a physical thing using um, neural lymphatics on muscles and things like that. And then at the end, the emotion is cleared. They feel better about things and they got a plan for, you know, how they're going to go forth with this relationship. And then they say, well, you know, I had a headache when I came in here and now it's uh -huh. gone. But they never so know about the headache when they come in because it's just something they have. <laughs> So would you say then that they, do they walk into seeing you 
to see you knowing that there's this emotional root to it. There's some emotional something that's blocking them from resolving it. No, I just, I guess they, they just come in because they're pissed off, you know, over something. Now, actually, Darcy, how do they know to come into you? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. Is it because they're, they're friends with you or like, like, did they see, okay, did they see an advertisement or does someone tell them about you and your service? I guess maybe, maybe at the beginning they come in because of physical things and then, and then that kind of goes by the wayside and then they come in for everything else. Okay. So they, they first came in because they had the, I you think, know, pain in the back or pain yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So this might be one of these things where, <clears throat> okay, so let's imagine your business is like a house and sometimes we've got these pretty robust mansions, you know, and there's all these rooms full of all these amazing things we want to show people. But the very, the most important thing is to get them in the house. Once they're in there, we can tell them because if you try to tell them everything up front, you're the crazy lady on the front porch screaming at everyone. My house is amazing. <laughs> I've got so many rooms. It's so much more impressive than it looks. Don't walk away from me. You know, yeah, um, that's and that's me. how, you're right. So <laughs> what we want is we just get them in. And when they're in, it's like, hey, can I give you a tour of the house? Very normal. So it seems to me one way you could go with this is you really hone in on the specific, you've got the mysterious, you've got a physical pain, you've gone to see the, the physical people, you've done the yoga, you've done the Cairo, whatever, and it hasn't helped. And, um, you know, it, it could be very, something very similar to the way that Rachel worded it, though, you know, in your own wording and, you know, give them your own sense of it. But, and then you help them with that physical thing. And then while they're there, there could be a conversation that you have with them about how this could also relate to other things. You know, you could tell them stories while they're there. This could be on your website, all sorts of stories also, you know, <laughs> it could be a... Yeah. Tad, I have a question for you. This is, sure. since, um, you know, a lot of us are doing work that uh, there are probably other people in the world doing that work. <laughs> right. Right. Um, it's not like each, each of us is doing work that no one else has ever thought of doing. And right. so, so in this case, I mean, you were very intuitive in the very beginning. You immediately brought us here. Yeah. Let's say that it's very similar in terms of how it's described. What's the, what's the line between borrowing right. some of this language and, and straight, straight out, you know, uh, copying it too much. I don't know. I mean, and maybe there's no sim simple answer to this. I don't think there's any simple answer. I wouldn't copy it directly, of course. But, sure, of course, of course. But one thing you can do is you sit down and you try to write it out 25 times. It's uh, a good exercise, yeah. by the way, with headlines. Yeah. Just because yeah, yeah, you totally. never know, number 15 could be the winner. Um, this is actually how, how I've, I've read that professional copywriters they mm -hmm. write a headline at least 25 times different ways, just, you know, yeah. some completely differently, some, com you know, very similar, but they write it at least 25 different times and then they kind of narrow down from there. So 25, there's a something, there's a study on that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I would do it a bunch of times and it'll also refine because, <clears throat> um, well, and part of it is, yeah, the, and the headline may be very similar, but then the body of the text will probably, you know, you might read what she wrote there. Um, and then you realize, oh, I, I would say it really differently. Yeah, and then, right. And then mm -hmm. as you write that, you may say, oh, that actually means that I should change the headline in this way. And you go back up and, and, and shift it. So you can use it as like sourdough starter. Let's say that could be the best relationship, you know? It's, mm. your, sco it's your SCOBY. And, mm. and, uh, and so you'll create something that has a similar strain of bacteria as the original one, but it will modify over time. Nice, nice. Um, Darcy, yeah. is that helpful? Very helpful. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, let's let's continue on. Um, we've got three more folks here, and I want to just uh, make sure we uh, try to get to everyone. So next next up, uh, Judy's not here, but um, but we can still say hello to her anyway. Judy helps business owners get a good night's sleep without relying on sleeping pills. Judy Yoda Solomon, check her out. Um, let's yeah, let's talk with Bev. Uh, let's talk with Bev here. So. I'm just gonna go and, sorry, do a bunch of spaces, go to the next page. All right, 
groovy. Okay, I'm just going to, uh, I just have to take out my earphones because I've got to charge my phone somehow. The oh, energy oh, batteries yeah. drop. It just means I won't be able to hear you quite as well, but I'll turn the volume up. Let's okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Volume up. All right. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and read this. Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's see the screen. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes. Can okay. hear you just fine. So okay. um, let's make sure this is charging. If my phone dies in the middle of this, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, no worries. Yeah, okay, we'll, so you we'll, said we'll, I work with women. Oh, can you put it down just one? So sorry, my phone's being so weird. I work with women struggling with unexplainable exhaustion that a good night's sleep doesn't fix. Uh, they're tired of feeling less than awesome, ready to let go, ready to let go of their all or nothing approach, approach and take consistent, not perfect action. Okay, so here's what I would say there, is that island A and island B, I don't see the relationship exactly. Um, so they're women in business, okay. So, okay, female entrepreneurs, they're struggling with, so they're tired, they're struggling with exhaustion. And um, even if they sleep, it's not helping. Okay, so I get they're real tired. So they're not feeling great as a result of that, that makes sense. And then all of a sudden it leaps to this completely different thing. They're ready to let go of their all or nothing approach and take consistent, not perfect action. Um, that seems like, yeah, that's just, those are two different things. If Island A had been, you know, there are a lot of women who they, they are realizing that this all or nothing, black, white, binary oppositional approach to the world is leaving them completely drained and exhausted then I said, okay. Um, so the question, one of the questions that's always worth asking here is, so they're ready to let go of their all or nothing approach. So that, that's, that's your, I mean, if they're coming to you saying, God, would you just help me let go of my all or nothing approach to life? If they're coming to you saying that, then that's one thing. But if they're coming to you just saying, I'm exhausted and I don't know why, that's another thing. Yeah, let's yeah. let's let's um, let's hear what Bev uh, wants to say about this. Just, yeah. Back in here. Hi, Bev. Hi, Good to have you here. Um, so I'm, sorry. Hi, Bev. Yeah. Hi. Hey there. Um, so, um, but so, yeah. Are they coming to you saying they're exhausted, or are they coming to you saying I got to get rid of this all or nothing attitude? So some people will primarily the problem is they're exhausted. They've been to lots of doctors and they could have gone to other natural healers, but they don't yeah. actually have an answer of why they're so tired all the time. So yeah. why I put a good night's sleep, because a lot of them originally came to me because they just weren't sleeping. Yeah. So I wanted to rule that one out in, in right at the beginning. So basically uh -huh. go away Great. and get a good, good night's good. sleep. <laughs> um, and then... Yeah, I can see now when you say that, um, that there is no where are we going because what they want is they want the choice to do that or the energy to have choice to do whatever they want in their life. So because my question, hmm. so, but my question is, are they coming to you saying at all, uh, are they aware that they have the all or nothing attitude in life? Yes, a lot of them tell me they're rebellious and they don't like being... Um, told what to do so often they do it all out for two weeks and then yeah. they stop and then they okay. do nothing i'm going to ask it again though are they aware of the pattern of all or nothing like are they aware that that's costing them in other words or are they just lot, proud of it and like yeah i'm rebellious and like screw the man you know a lot of them are yeah yeah i don't know if you i could work with you because you know i'm rebellious Okay, but again, this is the, the question. Are they aware that that's costing them? Are they aware that that may be at the root of their exhaustion? Um, I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay, so then I would scratch that from the... the <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, that's your point of view that you help them get to. But I love this idea. You're exhausted. Uh, you know, sleep can't touch it. And you don't know why. Mm you know, um, you can't figure it out. You're confused why you've tried all these other things. Um, and yet you're still depleted and exhausted. 
you know, um, what do you think they suspect is at the root of it? Do they suspect anything or do they come in just like, I have no idea what's going on? Well, because they've tried so many things, they also are a bit weary of, you know, they will sometimes say, oh, I've done that. But often it's because they weren't consistent. So some good, they've had some good things on their side, but they haven't been consistent because they, they give up before there's results or they've done too many things and not known which is the one that's actually helping. So I actually, the bottom line is I help them get to the root cause of their exhaustion and it's diagnostically, you know, so. Yes. Um, so what do, what do, do, again, what do they suspect might be at the root of it? Um, I don't like most people will come to me and say, I don't know why I'm so tired all the time. Great. They'll, then that's what you put in the headline. Mm. You know, I'm so you speak to the bafflement, you yeah. speak to the confusion about it. And what have they already tried by the time they, they've come to you? Um, often they've either you know, followed follow the doctor's advice, um, and taken a supplement of some kind. Yes. So they've they've done what I would call band aids, you know. So they've they've tried little things, and yeah. each of those little things haven't actually resolved the problem because, um, you know, either they didn't stick with it, or it wasn't the right thing. You know, it was just a band aid that the doctor gave them. Okay, so again, that's the kind of thing you could put in the headline. You know, you've been exhausted, and you've tried the following three big major things. None of that seems to have worked. Um, right, and so then we're gonna help you figure out what it is. Yeah. And by the way, this is just something for, for people to consider is that in your sales letter itself, you can begin to do part of this education. One of the things you could create is a quiz to see, like a little self-assessment to see if they're a super type A personality that just has that pattern, you know, of all or nothing. and you know, going till they drop all the time. And yeah, I, have, I, I do have a quiz um, because yeah. I work in four aspects of health and yeah. it actually guides them to where is their current focus, you know, like and obviously one of them is that they are just driven and they don't stop. And then other is that they've got emotional baggage. Another one is that, the you know, they're not doing their sole purpose. And another one is, um, sort of really thinky stinking. Sure, thinky, sure. Thinky thinking. <laughs> thinky, thinky stinking. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. So, great. So, I mean, so this is how this can quickly turn in the sales letter is you could say, look, you know, if you can't sleep, in my experience, there are four things, you know, you can jump to that very quickly. Mm. Um, but I think that's good to start with. Is that helpful, Bev? Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's not necessary that they can't sleep, though, but it's, I get where we're going. I, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. They can sleep. A lot of them can sleep, but they still wake up exhausted. Mm. Yeah, that's... So, so it's... it's um, yeah. So, for example, just a current, um, a current example of mine is this client has seen probably... I, I can't tell you how many specialists, doctors, naturopaths, but she's never stuck with anything. And so now I, I didn't want to take her on because I knew she's got really a lot of complexities. And I said to her, unless you're willing to make changes and stick with this for three months, then we, we might as well not start. And so I gave so, her a bit of tough, tough love and she realized, oh my gosh, is this what I've been doing? Yeah. And so, so Bev, this is interesting. So is she an ideal client or is she not an ideal client for you? Well, the, the, the proof will be in the pudding because some of my ideal clients are, are action takers. They, you know, they, they, I, I give them, you know, some ideas and we start saying we'll f focus on two small things. And then the next time they'll say, hey, I've decided to give up alcohol because I feel crap when I drink it anyway. So they'll, they'll kind of go ahead of the, where I'm leading them. They, so those are my ideal clients is where... They maybe haven't stuck to anything in the past, but as soon as they kind of see, hey, I'm feeling good, and they want to do more. 
Okay, and the, the, the last thing I'd leave you with, Bev, is an important question would be, what's the, what are the breaking points for them? You know, so they're, okay, they're exhausted, sleep doesn't seem to help, they're trying all these different things. But people can go on like that their whole life and nothing changes. So there's probably a moment, a type of moment where if they're finally like, okay, I'm willing to do anything. Yeah, and so that would be something good. Let, let's not dive into it now, but just something yeah. to think about moving yeah. forward. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'll Good. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bev. Thanks so much. Thank you. So let's go to uh, Rian and then Jeremy. So okay. uh, Rian, uh, here you are. Hello, hello. Thanks for being uh, here. Yeah, and George, by the way, my phone battery I, is just dropping so much faster than I thought it would. Uh, uh -huh. So I'm about, I'm about to catch an Uber. Cool. So um, if I vanish, it'll only be for a few minutes. But uh, we, you may get to enjoy the Uber trip with me. <laughs> nice. Okay, I mean, so this okay, one. So, so yeah, you want to read this or you want me to read it? Let's see, I, I can read it. I help twin flames and soulmates manifest and nurture the divine union relationship they desire and free themselves from self-sabotage, mistaken recognition, toxicity, codependency, ghosting, and unrequited love stories. Okay, so the thing I'm not clear about, so you help people who are already, they're couples already? Um, I can help couples, yes. Most of the people I help would be single people who've identified themselves as twin flames or soulmates, and they are not enjoying the, um, the journey, finding their ideal partner, or receiving the attention they desire from the person they've attached to. Okay, so that's, I would say what you just said. <laughs> I think that works even, even better than what you had. Uh -huh. Thankfully, this is recorded, so <laughs> okay. you can go back and hear what you said. <laughs> can you turn off? Thank you so much. Um, the, um, yeah, because what you said was very good. That was just the very, this is an important thing when we talk about um, when we talk about niching is the the using nickel words, not fifty cent words. You know, using the the kind of common speak, like the way they would say it. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you want to try another riff on that? Because it was real. You did real good. Yeah. What do they come when they? What do they say when they come to you? What they're like? Oh God, I'm just so like. What's what's up for them? Um, so when they come, they'll say, um, they will ask me things like, what, why am I so codependent? Um, why, why, why do I keep getting ghosted? Um, why doesn't the other person recognize that they're my soulmate or my twin flame? And of course, the problem is within them mm. and the way that they attach to the idea of the relationship rather than um, a magical fix around the other person, right? Yeah, there's like, I get the sense that, like, why do I keep having all this relationship drama or something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, with people who identify themselves as being twin flames or soulmates, they will often come from a place where they've had a lot of relationship disappointment, they'll mm. be sensitive they'll be quite vulnerable and they will want love more than anything. They're suffering from a lack of love. Now, when you say they identify as a twin flame, does that mean they're, they're in a relationship with no. somebody or th that they just imagine they have a twin flame in the world? These, these would be people who have heard about the concept of twin flame or soulmate and they would have been doing a lot of searching. They, they'd have read a lot of yeah. stuff online. They'd have watched a lot of YouTubes. And they'll be saying, that's me. I'm a twin flame. I know I have a twin flame out there, right? And they uh, may have met somebody and they've said, this, this is my twin flame. But then that person isn't recognizing them. And it's generally because they have attached the concept to the person. So they need to free themselves from that. And the work I do helps them get more in touch with themselves to heal their, you know, their inner child, their codependence, their toxicity, so that they can actually go out there and find somebody who is a spiritual match for them. 
Beautiful. I love it. So I can see the headline. I mean, there's a number, some of the things you said would work very well, but it could also be, um, why is it so hard to find my twin flame? That type of thing. Okay. You know, why do I struggle so much? Um, and I could see those, those first few lines being something like, I mean, just what you said, you know, you know, in your heart of hearts, you have one. We're going to take a right turn at the top there. Um, you know, and you're, you're, uh, don't put the right turn part in the, in the headline. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you know in your heart of hearts you have a twin flame. And yet the past few relationships you've had where you've been convinced that it was there, it never panned out and you don't know why. Because that's what I'm hearing them is, number one, a certainty they have it. And number two, a confusion about why it's not working out. Mm, yes, exactly. Right. So then, so that's got to go in the headlines. Do you see what, we, what we're trying to do in this sort of statement is get the most real clear things there. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there's some start around that. Okay. Can I, can I ask this uh, sure. kind of formula of I help um, X or Y person get X or Y um, it, it sounds like it's almost as though you are suggesting I change that formula um, and create something that's a bit more, um, shall we say, a bit, a, a bit more like question focused? Well, it could be. A question can be a way to do it. But mm -hmm. what I'm saying is sometimes in a statement you could say like, why, why do I have such a hard time? Like I know I have a twin flame why do I have such a hard time finding one? Or why does it never work out? That is the problem. Yeah. It's just, it's rendered in their words. And this can be a very powerful thing. If you're able to articulate their experience um, in such a way that they, you, you say their words and they say, oh my God, I said that to myself five minutes ago. Um, mm -hmm. It's very powerful. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's a very powerful thing to do. Um, it's that, you know, and I call this the I just frame. This is a, a, something new I came up with. It's just people will say, I just, uh. <laughs> in a moment of exasperation, people say very honest things. So it's good to listen to your clients. And if they ever say the words, I just, you, you just, you just pause them and you say, uh, could you just hold on while I, I get a pen and paper so I can write down what you're about to say? Cause it's probably going to make a really good headline for me in my, uh, <laughs> In my future sales copy. Can you say, can you give an example of I just, what do you mean by that? Uh, so I just, um, one second, I'm just going to plug in my phone. Uh, I just can't stand, I just don't want to manipulate people when I'm marketing. I just am tired of cold calling. Um, or in this case, it'd be like, I just, like, I just I, call me back. right, like, right. Like I, I'm just, I'm just tired of uh, being with people who don't recognize that they're my soulmate. Might they say that? Or, yes. The, yes. Or, or so Rian, what, what, what would you say? Yeah, yeah Rian, what, what, what do you say? Does, say? I just want to stop self-sabotaging myself. I just want my divine counterpart so I can get on with my mission. Um, I just wish I would stop being so codependent and I'd stop chasing. Um, I, I, just, I just wish he, he would, I could be my true self so, I could, so he could see how much value I have. Th things like that, right? Yeah. But Why'd you come on this call and bother us with your troubles? You're brilliant. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. yeah I, I, I think That's, so. I, I think Rian understands uh, her, her audience quite well, actually. I think yeah. so. Yeah, this is awesome. Really good stuff. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. But it needs some work, right? Yeah, there's just, <clears throat> but you've got the scent of it. That's, that is really the most important thing. The most important thing is that you have the, the flavor. And then it's yeah. just wordsmithing. Right. You know, this is just tearing and, um, and everything now is just the icing on the cake. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're Thanks, welcome. Rian. Beautiful work you're doing. It's, I could, it's fun. I'll tell you why I know what you're doing is good is because uh, I, I literally know somebody in my mind. I can picture somebody. 
who who okay. is in exactly that situation. The way she would have worded is, "I'm looking for my compliment." You've got my yeah, an, another website of mine there, George. That's not my my oh. twin flame website. <laughs> what's the what's the twin flame site? It's manifest twin flame dot com. Got it. You have several websites, huh? I, I did. I got, I got confused. Yeah. Cool. Nice. All right. Well, there it is. Good. All right. Anything else, Rian? No, that's perfect. That's Thank you. Right. Thank You're you for welcome. your time. Thank you. All right. And uh, lastly, we've got Jeremy. Um, and actually, we weren't even sure that. Uh, uh, Tad, are you still okay for for like ten minutes? Yeah, you bet. Okay. Yeah, we we weren't sure um, if Jeremy we could have Jeremy go today, but I think uh, I think we do. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste his his statement here. Um, actually, I have an edited one that I just put in the chat. If that's all right. Oh, you have an edited one. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, hold on a sec. Cool. Well, there this is, is the most adventurous Zoom call I've ever done in my life. <laughs> yeah. So there it is, Tad. Do you want to read it? or? Oh, actually, no, no, hold on. Let me share my screen. That probably would help. There we go. Hold on a sec here. There we go. Uh, all right. I help new and becoming fathers embrace fatherhood as a rite of passage <clears throat> so that they have heart heartful yeah relationships yeah. with their child their partner and themselves um okay the my here's my sense of it. it's beautiful by the way i mean thank you for doing it because it's important work mm -hmm. and my sense is you're talking possibly more about your diagnosis than the the journey you're talking more about what you think they need than what they're experiencing or craving possibly i mean are they coming to you saying i really want to approach my fatherhood as a rite of passage and i don't know how to do it or are they just saying i want to, i know i just want to make a bigger deal on my fatherhood but i don't know exactly what that looks like like what are they saying when they come to you um honestly this is a new niche for me and that i'm just sure. I, I'm I'm a new father and I'm starting to expand, finding a lot of passion and wanting to expand in this way. Um, so that I I don't I don't know that answer yet, and I'm trying to actually build an audience and reach out and find that answer. Well, okay. So here's a question: People, your ideal kind of potential father, what kinds of authors would they be into? Kind of authors. Um, I can, I can think of like the resources that I'm using for like the baby development stuff. Is that, is that the kind of thing you're thinking of or? Well, not everyone even knows what the hell a rite of passage is. That's, we're, okay, we're in okay. niche territory just using that term. Right, right. Yeah. So let me just toss out some, some words to stimulate here. Sure. Robert Bly, Martine Prechtel, Michael Mead, Stephen mm -hmm. Jenkinson. Mm -hmm. Uh, David White and Martin Shaw. Do any of those names mean anything to you? Um, a little bit vaguely <laughs> that I haven't okay. actually, yeah, dived. So where I, are you getting? Where are you getting your rite of passage lingo? My rite of passage lingo is uh, from a lot of my own experience doing this doing this work. Um, that has, uh, I mean, so, some of like the ceremonial aspect of like transitioning into fatherhood, I think a lot of also has been adjacent to people who have been um, diving into wilderness therapy and things like that. Ah, uh, wilderness therapy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, are you familiar with the Mankind Project? Yeah. Okay. Are you familiar with John Young? No. So wilderness therapy, what kinds of, uh, can you just give some quick names of like schools or authors or? Sure. Um, well, I, I, I went to Naropa and they have the wilderness therapy program there. Um, yeah. And 
I, I also did a out, outward bound wilderness therapy program when I was in high school. Um, uh, and yeah, there's, um, a number around a number around here that I've I my internship was also at a place that had rite of passage as a big part of it working with teenagers with addiction. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So, let's, George, can you read it out one more time? Yep. I am. I help new and becoming fathers embrace fatherhood as a rite of passage so that they have heartful relationships with their child, their partner, and themselves. It's so interesting. I mean, it, to me, it's pointing in the right direction <laughs> and the, the language feels clunky to me. The, like to have heartful relationships, to me, that sounds very diagnostic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not the kind of thing I imagine anyone saying, I'd love to have a more heartful relationship with anyone. Got it. Uh -huh. um, so there's that I just think there's probably something else they're craving but it's here's here's where, where why all my where my questions are coming from is it could be like something like hey look are you a, a you're a man who is into this kind of wilderness stuff you you have a draw to, to the indigenous um, to your own ancestry, to ceremony and tradition, even if it hasn't been deep, but you felt a, a calling. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you've been delivered to the doorstep of fatherhood. And you're aware, whether you want it or not, this is a rite of passage for you. Mm. And you don't know how to engage it. Mm -hmm. In a way, you just, you see this for the opportunity it is but you don't know how to engage it in, in a way that's going to make the most of it, that's going to, um, how do you meet this moment in a way that really honors the moment? Um, there's something like that. That's part of how I imagine it. Like they, they're, there's already a certain kind of man who's gonna be a good fit for you, you know, who would already wanna work with you. And it's just that that man now finds himself at this place of fatherhood, number one, and number two, with some awareness of the immensity of it, of the, um, the importance of it, you know, mm -hmm. it's, and, and there's, so how do you think, I'm curious how, for you, how you felt when you, you, you're there and it's like, oh my God, I'm going to be a father. This is a big deal. Did you feel, was it unprepared? Was it scared? Was it, um, it was, you know, what was the <laughs> confused? What was the feeling? All of the things um, that. I'm overwhelmed at first, and I think the most powerful feeling that came through with it was actually humility of just like the purpose of this and the sense of like, I'm like, I've up until this point, it's been my journey and how am I going to contribute to the world? And now there's at this point of just like, the biggest thing they'll ever do for the world is raise this kid. Boom, what you just said right there. Mm. So it's something like, look, you're a man and you, you know, you've been loosely drawn to all these things. And it's, um, yeah, all of a sudden, there you are. Mm -hmm. And the doorway of fatherhood is, is cracking open. And you're realizing, this is the most important thing I'm ever going to do in my life. Mm -hmm. And you're, so maybe it's like you're feeling like you want to mark this in some way you want to you just know it's so important and you, you know you're going to need some support in this transition right because it, because there's also a voice that says i hope i don't fuck this up <laughs> yeah sure right mm -hmm. this is the most important thing i hope i don't fuck this up right and then and now, then now to this me, youtube video so has I, to have an explicit tag no. oh oops sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's all good all good joking um so are you offering to help them craft a rite of passage for this moment or is there something beyond that yeah I, i'm thinking that that will end up being like the premium thing is actually just like going through um like get, creating a gathering for them 
um, of like bringing people together to hold hold space and do this transition with the ceremony. Um, then I'm imagining that the main thing also being um, a combination of group and one-on-one -on -one, um, so that it creates community support going into fatherhood. Okay. So here's, here's a twist I'm going to suggest yeah. that might be worth experimenting with. Uh -huh. When, okay. So when you got the news of fatherhood, uh, did your life become a little busier than it had been before? Yes, definitely. Right. You, so you get a little, as you said, overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is not necessarily the best time to be marketing to somebody. Right. So now you see the trouble you're in. <laughs> You want to market to somebody who's now completely emotionally overwhelmed with no, no real capacity to take in new stuff. Right. So here's the, the potential twist is you, who you might actually be marketing to are the, that man's friends or the, the, their family. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be like not, so this is worth testing. Like, you know, in terms of Facebook ads, yeah. it's be worth testing one ad saying like, Hey, are you approaching fatherhood? Another one might be, do you have a friend who's into these things and they're approaching fatherhood and you want to support them and you don't quite know how? Here's like, let me help you create a rite of passage for your friend. I love that. Um, I also imagine that a big target is also um, their partners. And... You because sure. yeah because like so often the moms are going to be alone to a lot of the birthing as uh, like uh, checkups and everything like that where all of the yeah all of these well, there's there's a number of ways you could go with this one their friends two mm -hmm. their family by the way all of these are, yeah, i mean you can just you might actually do well with all of them but one friends two family third mm -hmm. the partner and how about number four these kinds of people are likely to have a doula or a midwife so there's a bunch right. of hubs for you uh-huh you know, so it could be the kind of thing where you get on a call for a bunch of doulas midwives and you say, like, as you know, a lot of men around this time start not knowing their role in all of it. And they're so confronted. And while there, there's all these baby blessings and people getting around the mother, nobody's doing shit for the, sorry, George, I swore again. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's doing anything for the father. Right. And they often feel really left out. I mean, I swear you could go to the... Um, like the midwives and doula conferences and do a talk mm -hmm. and they would be fawning over you because also they a lot of them don't also know how to support the men either and they're Bingo. focused on women you know and you could um yeah you know, oh my gosh and you could be um you could even have a, a you could there's a woman i know in edmonton jennifer Summerfelt. Mm -hmm. uh last night last name Summerfelt f-e-l-d-t uh, jennifersummerfelt.com i think she's had so many websites but you might want to reach out to her because she was actually she's a, a doula mm -hmm. and a practice for a number of years and she was going to create a package of how to how the husband could help their partner through postpartum mm -hmm. and i don't know if she ever did it but you know this is the type of thing right. where you could say look we're going to help you with this rite of passage into fatherhood and part of that is you're going to learn a lot about how to be there for your partner mm -hmm. during their postpartum because it's going to be very confusing. They're going to turn into a, a different person and you're not going to be sure what to do. You know, So this could be included or you could partner with somebody else who, who offers that kind of thing. Um, but so you see what I'm saying? So this then becomes a different target market where it could be, mm. you know, attention doulas and midwives. Uh huh. You know, you're working with a couple and they're, you know, they're this type of person. They're into these kinds of things. You can, and you've noticed over the years all the attention the mothers can get, but there's nothing for the father to prepare them, to steal them, to, to uh, galvanize them for this moment and to recognize the difficulty it is. And your hands are totally full. You can't take that on. So here's something that you could be offering, you know, to them. You know, and I could see, by the way, the free, the pink spoons on this one. And by the way, the fact that I'm having so many ideas and I can't stop myself, even though we're not here to talk about all the ideas, we're here to talk mm. just about the target market. <laughs> the fact that I'm having ideas um, means it's good, mm. right? Mm. It means there's something clear here because the ideas come when, the, when it's good. So, but it, like a little pink spoon could be, 
the five biggest mistakes men make when when um, approaching fatherhood? Mm -hmm. You know, or doing a rite of passage, or it could be the five biggest mistakes that um, friends make. You know, around their fathers, their friends' fathers' fatherhood. You know, you, you just hear the big blunders, and then it's and you know the other thing that the thought I had is, you can say to the friends, look. We're going to do this and you won't have to pay anything for it because part of what I'm going to teach you how to do is how to do a GoFundMe to raise most, if not all of the money to pay for this. Mm. I love that. Nice. Nice. Well, Jeremy, I hope this was helpful. Yeah. So I, what I'm taking away from this is, is refocusing on the other audiences that might bring in the men instead of trying to have a target thing of saying like this is working like aiming it for the dads it's maybe maybe i think what, what i'm primarily saying is at least experiment at least try it, wonder about it test different things don't be too sure about anything yet mm -hmm. um but i know that you know there was a, there's some friends of mine they have a website called booty baby it's like buddha baby but with an i booty baby dot huh. com and they sell these little gift boxes for new parents but it's so brilliant because who they're aiming it for, even though these are the kinds of things that a parent might want, it's a box that I could get from my friends who are hit conscious hippies, you know, with like organic rubber teething rings, coconut oil, baby wraps, all this, mm -hmm. certain kinds of tea. So they've done all the shopping and sourcing for me and I just pay for the box and they'll mail it to them. So mm -hmm. that's another example of this kind of oblique um, thing. But so it's just worth trying. It's worth experimenting. Literally, this is the kind of thing where I would sit down I mean, I would do, um, generically, I would do 25 versions of the kind of core headline of the core island A, B, uh, or just, you know, work it out. And then I would take those four potentials, the friends, the family, the doulas, the person themselves, craft a headline for each of them, and try a Facebook ad for each, and just see, see which one gets the most traction. Um, you know, targeting it as clearly as you can for the, the type of person, the interests they would have and all that, which George can certainly help you with. And then you just notice like what, because, you know, one of them will probably get a better response than the others, you know, and, and you can just keep experimenting and taking, but you may find out, oh, if I go this direction, it works so much better. Mm -hmm. um, I just do think this is the kind of thing that will work better if people buy it for their friend and get coached through it because it's that and that but you see how it changes it then it's not um you're overwhelmed with fatherhood it's you want to be a good friend you really want to hit a home run you really want to do something remarkable and special for this friend this is your best friend they're approaching fatherhood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know they deserve something right now and you mm -hmm. don't know what it is or how to do it yeah great thank you yeah. Awesome. Well, this brings us to the end of the call, um, but you can get a taste. I mean, this is just a taste. We, we had different people here work, uh, that Tad's working with, but this is the kind of stuff you get in Tad's course. Um, Tad, they get this kind of uh, feedback about their niche statement in the course with you. Um, I, I knew that. And they also get a Facebook group with others who are doing this work and giving each other feedback on this. Of course, there's the 90 day program itself where every day you get a little video that kind of brings you closer and closer towards that um, statement that you're, you know, your description that you're really proud of and that really resonates with the people that you're trying to reach. So if you're all interested, again, I'll just share my screen one more time. Um, go to nichingspiral.com, scroll to the very top nichingspiral.com go to under products go to the home study course um tad is there anything you want to say about this before we go i mean everything is very well described here obviously but just want to give you a chance to say anything else before we before we head out about this so unmute here while and you're just looking for some oh stuff. sorry go, go ahead i just unmuted you go ahead sorry oh, the, the uh, yeah it's a pretty good course i'm pretty happy with it it's it's, uh, you know, if you're just looking for some help and you've been really struggling with this niche and you just want some kind of sequential step-by-step -step, uh, help, this is the best that I know woven into something. 
and um, it's going to be getting better all the time. I, I, I'm not leaving this course alone. I'm actually in the next, I don't know, uh, six months, there's going to be a very significant upgrade to it as well. So, Sweet. yeah. Awesome. Great. And for those, like I mentioned earlier, if you buy the course um, through me, quote unquote, meaning you, you buy the course and you let me know, hey, George, bought the course uh, thanks to your video or whatever, then I will give you $150 of course credit from my courses. So it's kind of like you're, you're paying 300, but you're getting 450 in actual course value. So, but even the 300 is just a really good deal for working with Tad and in, in that community. Um, all right. Well, thank you everyone for uh, being here. Tad, thank you so much for all the work that you do and for what you did today with, with the folks right. who are on the call. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, I mean, clients of yours are, you know, friends of mine and, and really beautiful work, everyone, what you're doing sincerely. I'm, I'm so glad that it's in the world, what you're up to. Uh, you, you, you have to keep going. That's the deal. You just have to keep going with what you're doing because it's needed right now. So bless you all. Strange days that we're in, rough gods that we're all uh, encountering and uh, glad that you're out there with me. Thank you so much, Tad. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.